everybody, it's Sarah here again from SH Millinery and here I am with another video. And this today I'm going to be making what are often called Juliet caps, half hats, few few names for them, but sort of a very uh, 50s style of uh, hats. So I'm going to do bridal ones, but they could be made out of anything and any fabric or style. Now, what I'm going to be using is an ordinary round block, ordinary head block. Doesn't really matter about the size too much because I'm going to make this wired and sizable. And I'm also using a little 50s um, paper mache hat block that I've got because I want to do two at once. Now, you don't need this shape hat block because you can make you can do this shape on an ordinary head block and I'm only using it because I want to do two at once. So I've covered both the blocks in clean film and then what I'm using is millinery buckram which you'll have seen me talk about lots of times. It's woven cotton heavily starched. And I'm only going to be using one layer, so one layer for this one and one layer for this one. Now I'm going to cut off my salvage because I don't need that. And I'll start with this one. So I'm going to look and see roughly what size I need it. And I'm going to cut off a piece for that one. Ooh. So that's for that one, and um, probably this is a bit big for this one. Might just cut off a little piece here and there. <clears throat> Easier if it's a bit smaller. Only has to be a rough shape because we don't shape this till after it's been blocked. And then what we need to do is wet this. So I've got a bowl of warm water here. You can spray it with water, but I'm just going to put it in the warm water for a moment and let the um, buckram absorb some of the water and then I'm going to let it drip because I don't want tons and tons and tons and tons of water everywhere. I'll put that to one side for a minute and do the other bit. Now it takes a while for the buckram to absorb the water and begin to be able to stretch it and you'll, you'll start to feel that it's going soft. Now be aware when you use this, the starch comes off on your hands and you get quite sticky. It takes a couple of minutes for it to absorb the water, but once it has, we can get cracking. So yeah, that's feeling fairly stretchy. So this one I'm going to clip because it's easier to clip on this than it is to pin. So what I'm going to do is start at the back and the front and clip it down. Now, as I say, if you're doing it on a block, you can just pin it. Now the good thing about this, as I say, because it stretches, you can stretch it so that you haven't got any nasty creases. Right, so that one's stretched over. Oh, I'll do another clip there. And um, I shall put that aside to dry. My hands have got all tacky now. <laughs> and then we'll carry on with that later. So that's to one side. And this one, I'm going to 
just stretch it over the head because I'm going to make a different shape. So. So everybody, my um, buckram has been drying on the hat, roughly into the shape of, I want it. I'm going to take the pins out and finish drying it off with an iron so that I can smooth it out as well. Now I have to say, I've made a recent purchase that I absolutely love and recommend and it's this, a mini iron. This is an Ansio one. It's a steam iron, doesn't hold a lot of water, but it will steam quite nicely. And it's been brilliant for hats because you can get into little crevices on brims and things like that. Ideal for this as well. Now to protect the sole plate, I'm gonna use a piece of greaseproof kitchen paper while I iron round. Now, because I need to make a template for, for this, what I've done is I've got a sheet of A4 paper. It'll work on US letter size. Oh, the table's a bit wet there. Never mind. Because the A4 will fit pretty much over the head to about where I want it. So I'm going to fold it in half. Get wet on the table. And then I'm going to work out how I want my shape. So I'm going to, oh, that helps me pen works. When you've worked out your, your shape, you've then got to draw that onto your head block. And of course, it's not going to fit perfectly because we've got a flat piece of paper, but it will make sure that your curves are fairly equidistant. So the best thing to do is pin it to the block. Then try it on your head, and if you're not happy with it, which I'm not, I've made these too big, trim it up. Right, I've made it too shallow at the front. I've tried it on my head, and I need a bit more depth there. So what I'm going to do is put my... That's why I like buckram. Flap a bit. <laughs> I'm going to put that on there. Got the pins in just to keep it in place for a second. Cut off some of the buckram and just make it wider here. That makes it a bit wider at the front, which is more what I want. So I'm going to iron that to the top. And because the starch is in there, a little bit of steam and a bit of iron, and it'll all join up. Yeah, the starch in the buckram keeps it in place, but I will put a row of stitch in because I'm going to be manhandling this a lot and I don't want it to fall apart. So I'm going to put a row of stitch in along there. And the other one <laughs> should be easier because... I'm not, I'm just cutting out the shape of the block. But I've got to get it out of here. Which sometimes is a bit of a pickle. So 
So I'm going to cut round my edge and uh, go on from there. And you'll see what I mean. You could have used a block to cut this shape, but I've used this little half hat block. So I'm just going to give it a run over with the iron. So we've got our two shapes. Don't worry that this looks like it's gone out of shape. That will as well, because by the time we finished, we'll have been pulling them about all over the place. And now we have to wire the edges. You only want quite fine wire, so millimetre really thickness is your absolute max. But I'm actually using some craft wire here, so I'm going to go off, which is slightly thinner. You can't use sprung steel because it won't bend round the corners and you won't get a good shape. You need something that's got a bit of bend into it. Right, now you need to start at the back of the hat, so you need to figure out where your back is. And the shape is, it's slightly shaped on the front here, so this is the back. So what I'm going to do is just pin wire, and you'll have to straighten the wire out as you go. Otherwise it will be all twisty and bendy and whatnot. Right, so that's going to be about enough. And then an overlap of about an inch either side. Cut your wire. Now, because this is too difficult to sew on the sewing machine, really, because of it, them being odd shapes, I'm going to hand stitch this in place. So, right, so I've wired both my pieces um, with a not very neat blanket stitch all the way around. And when I get to the two bits of wire that join together, I just go over and over and over and over and over it just to stop it from poking through. Then what I do is I tack some bias binding all the way around the edge to keep it neat and tidy and again stop the wire poking through and also to have something to stitch to. And I've run my little mini iron over the bias to flatten it. So it's got bias binding on it now. And now we've got to cover it with something as a padding, as a base coat. So yeah, so I, what I do is I cover it with flannelette. You can buy Domet, which is a quite a fluffy fabric um, used in quilting. But I use uh, flannelette sheeting or brushed cotton sheeting where one side is brushed and the other side is smooth. And I buy pillowcases and just pull, pull the seams apart and use the fabric. Now, it's best to cut on the cross. So I'm going to cut a piece off. I'm cutting a big piece off just so that I can show you properly. I cut a big piece off like that. Oop. Turn it upside down. And as I say, I'm going to cut on the cross. So I'm going to do a rough, and I need quite a big um, edge around. So like this. Maybe a better shape than uh, so I'm just going to chop that out. You'll cut off the excess when you've got it fastened to the um, hat. So yeah, so we've got it on the bias, so we've got some stretch. So I'm going to start just pinning. See where I'm, see where I am. Clipping rather. Now, because we've got curves, we're going to have to narrow this quite a bit. 
So, and then we're going to have to um, gather or ease it into these curves. And when you get to the very curvy bits, you're going to have to cut slits to make it go round. So there we are. So I've cut slits in there. And I'll have to make them a bit bigger, I think. Yeah. Oop. So that they fit over like so. Do either do tiny pleats or do a running stitch around the curve. I'll show you how to do that. I would if I knew where my needle was. So as you can see, what I've done is a running stitch, which means that I can pull it in nice and tight over the curves and get a flatter, a flatter finish. Right, so I'm going to carry on just doing this and then what will happen is once I've got this all either curved or flattened or pinned, I'm then going to trim it again and I'm going to then stitch this uh, flannelette to the bias binding. So that was one of the reasons for the bias binding to be there so that I can just stitch to the underside and it won't go through to the top side. So I'm going to carry on with that and come back to you. So as you can see, I've got the flannelette all stitched on to the base. And what I'm going to do is do exactly the same now with some bridal satin. I've cut it on the bias. I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the uh, flannelette and I'm going to stitch that on. Right, so now I've got the satin on the top and that's been sewed inside, excuse the um, uh, marker pen, but that, that's erasable with water. I'll get that off in a minute. So I've got so far and then I can cover it with whatever I want. Um, I'm going to use this beaded lace and I'm going to cover it with that and I'll show you how that transpires. And then we have to put the lining and then we have to put the um, ribbon and then we have to put the combs in. This is what you might call a couture job because it's a lot of processes, takes a long time. So here we are on a very messy workbench where we've done various layers. And we've put the bridal netting, the beaded netting on, and attached it to the bottom. Now, if you've got beads here, you've got to chop them off because they'll just lead to problems wearing. But you can sew extra beads onto the top. Now, it's easier when you're attaching lace or bridal netting like this because it has a good it has a good stretch to it so you can stretch it around and make it look nice but what we need to do now is work out our lining now the easiest thing for this is uh, acrylic felt because although acrylic felt can't be blocked it can be stretched and it will stretch because it's non-woven. It will stretch over your hat. So what I'm going to do is do a rough draft. And I'm using a laundry non-permanent marker here. There are other ways of doing this, obviously, and you'll, um, you can always work out your own ways. This is just how I do things. So, okay. 
I'm gonna try it again. See how it looks. So now I'm going to go away and get rid of some of those blue marks. So we're going to do a less complicated, a less couture make on this shape. Now what I have done is, as normal, I've wired, I've covered the edge with um, vice binding. And what I'm going to use for this is stretch lace and you can buy this easily enough online so we're going to just get a rough idea of how far we need it I've got a piece that I think will fit so let's go there and as you can see because it's stretch it will stretch over in all directions normally because it is lycra based right so what I've done is I sewed my little roses around the edge of this and then I've put my felt, my acrylic felt, in the middle. Now, the reason I've used acrylic felt is it, I don't have to edge it. It's nice and neat. It's soft. And if you're blocking it over something... Now, it doesn't really block acrylic felt. I, should, I shouldn't really say block. But if you're shaping it, you can stretch it, which is good. And if you run a hot iron over it it slightly melts the fibres and keeps it in shape. Now be careful if it's, if you keep the hot iron on too long, you just melt the acrylic and it's not nice. But if you just do it briefly, just go over it, you can start to feel the fibres melt and it keeps it in shape for when you put it inside your hat. Now I've stitched carefully all the way around the outside and how I'm going to finish it off is twofold thing. First of all, I'm going to use bridal button elastic. So bridal button elastic, I'm going to stitch all the way around the inside. Now why I like this is you've got lots of fixing points because you can put your bobby pins or your hair grips through the little loops and keep it on the head. Now for a double whammy, you can use a comb as well. So for example, a thin metal comb, I really would have liked one of the smaller ones, but I think I've run out. Um, you can bend it to shape, put it at the front of the hat facing backwards because you want to be able to push it onto the hair like that, stitch over that, then stitch your button elastic, oh, wrong way around, over the top. So I'm going to carry on and do that now and come back to you.